Hi. So yesterday a friend of mine asked me to make a video on how to create a keypad for inserting a password or something inside of a game. So yeah, I'll be showing today how to do that in Godot. Let's see, so I'm gonna start with a user interface node because it's easiest with that. It is possible with 2D nodes, but honestly there's no point. You can always attach a control node inside of 2D applications as well and scale it accordingly. So the easiest way is to just start with this and deal with the uh, positioning and scaling inside of a level later. So let's see, we can name this keypad. Give this a VBox. And I'm just gonna do a bit of um, creating containers for containers for containers here. Give this a color act and a label. Okay, now I want everything to use the entire screen for starters. Correct. This here, size flags, expand. This already does that. This should also do it. Don't shrink center, we expand. We want to use everything we have. So as ASDF, we wanna be able to see. The text is currently not visible because it's the same color as this. So let's make it darker. So there we see, we have text. I'm gonna center the text. Center on both axes. And that should work out fine later. I'm gonna save the scene actually. Now we don't just want a margin container in here. We want some space to actually put our buttons. Now since the buttons are usually gonna be in a grid, let's use the grid control node. Grid container. And it does the same thing. Let's expand. There we go. Now it takes up half the screen. And we can add buttons to that. I'm just gonna use the inbuilt usual buttons. But the same thing would be possible with texture buttons if you want to make custom textures, so that's fine as well. Let's just give this text one for now. And let's see. There are the side flex. Expand. Take as much space as we can. I'm gonna make a grid container three columns wide. So we can get three buttons next to each other before it goes into the next line. And that's roughly what we're gonna get in the end. In terms of the uh, size per button. Good. Now I'm gonna actually change the font. I downloaded a font here. You don't have to use the same one. I just got this one from uh, fonts.google.com or whatever the link is. Let's see, I'm gonna set, actually, yeah, it's not on the margin container, but here. Custom font. New dynamic font. Now this one needs the extra font. So I drag that in here. And I give it a different size. Let's make that 200. That's fine. One, two, three. Good, I'm actually gonna rename this because I want it to be called button one. This one button C, this one button zero, and this one button okay. Because now the buttons are also going to correspond to what text is gonna be in them in a moment. Let's change the text. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. If there were more buttons, I guess you could also do this dynamically by uh, telling the code how to name them. But I think for this case it's faster to just do it by hand and good is. And there we have text on them. They need a different font though. They, they need a larger font for starters because this is actually hard to read. So let's go into the font, custom font, new di- no, 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 not bitmap. No, no. Dynamic font. This and settings. 
Um, let's make this like 45. There we go, that seems fine. And see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks fine. This, uh, this is basically the visual part of the user interface pretty much done. You can design it however you want later, but yeah, this works. If you make it a bit thinner, then basically it's gonna be more like an actual keypad, the way people usually align it. In that case, you would probably want the font to be a bit larger or something. But yeah, that's just a bit of uh, customization you can always do. For now, for the uh, default size I have, this works fine. Now, let us make this actually functional though. This should actually do something. For this, let's see. Each of these buttons should be connected to the keypad. So the keypad needs a script. And in the script we can say, I'm gonna make a key press function, so I don't have to write the same code so often. Um, the text is less than three. And no, none of these variables exist yet. I'm gonna create them in a second. Plus equals str of digit. Good, now let's see, that's fine. So let's create the uh, text edit. Bar text edit equals, um, okay, let's see, where is it? Vbox container, margin container label, that's what we need. Uh, the reason I'm calling this text edit is because in testing I originally had this as a text edit. It doesn't really matter, a text edit works fine, but it just didn't work out as nicely with the scaling as the label I'm using now. So I think I'm actually gonna rename this to label to uh, make it clearer what I'm doing. Just a little bit. Uh, do we need a ready function here? No, we don't, not right now. Um, what's the issue? Oh, right, I forgot to put on ready because this can't be loaded when we're not ready yet. Good, now we need... I'm, I'm also gonna set a password actually. Var uh, const, that's password equals one, two, three. Easy. Good, now let's connect all of these buttons. Yeah, that's the thing, sometimes when I try to connect things too quickly in a row, it throws an error message down here. I guess uh, it's like Godot is still busy with something and doesn't want me to use this yet. No issue though, in case of doubt, just do it again and then it works. Come on. Come on. Almost there. And there we go. That's all of the buttons. Now. Key press digit is one because it's button one. It matches with the label which makes it Pretty easy to make these match up. Again, you could do this dynamically by checking the name of the button, but for that you would need a script on all of the buttons to do it cleanly. And I just don't think it's necessary when you only have a few buttons like this. You know, for a if you wanted to do an entire keyboard, then it's probably easier to do it dynamically. But this is not particularly long. Okay, that is fine. Now in the case of oppressing okay, I'm just gonna do if 
um, label dot text is equal to the password. Then we print correct password. Else we print wrong password. Okay, that's uh, simple enough. And we can also say just in case label dot text equals empty string and get rid of that on inputting an incorrect password. Now when pressing the C button, we just get rid of the text and it's easy. Okay, let's see, is there anything missing here? Well, let's, let's just run it and see. Easier to try it. First of all, yeah, I can insert number one everywhere right now. Why is that? Oh, because I'm forgetting a step. I'm forgetting to actually adjust the numbers. That's smart. There you go. Nine, zero. Yeah, that wasn't so hard, was it? Okay, clear. So if I press numbers when they are right, when it's already full, it's just not going to do anything. I can delete numbers. That's fine. If I press OK, it's going to say wrong password because that 885 is not the password. If I do 123, it's going to say correct password. In the same thing, you could of course output a signal instead. So whatever is trying to, well, you can basically just tell any other part of your program with a signal that, hey, the correct password has been put in. So do whatever it is you're doing, open a door or whatever it is. And yeah, that is pretty much all. I'm gonna clear that out. I don't want a default value in the password. That is fine. And that will be all for today. Bye.